So you need a water pump. Maybe yours is leaking. Maybe the bearings are noisy. Maybe the shaft wobbles and you're worried that the fan's going to go through the radiator. Maybe your car's having heating issues and you've replaced everything else in the cooling system and this is your last hope. Let's talk about water pumps. My name's Walter. This is the GT350 Garage and I'm out here. It's snowing tonight and I'm working on the cooling system of my 1966 Shelby GT350, kind of ironically. What makes a good water pump? Should it be aluminum or is cast iron okay? I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to give you some truth that maybe you've not heard. What are the features that make a water pump a good water pump? We will get into that and in detail. And then we need to talk about how that water pump's attached. Okay, sure, we use bolts. What condition are your bolts in? If your bolts are pitted, if they're rusty, do you trust those bolts? We're gonna talk about replacing the bolts and we're gonna talk about keeping track of what bolts go where so that you don't make a mistake and break a timing cover or end up with broken bolts because you over torque them. So, little things like that we're gonna talk about in this video. And with that, let's get started talking about the water pumps themselves. Here we go. This pump. This is an early 221, 260, 289 pump. Okay. This pump has these ears on the back of it that engage the timing cover. And it has an exposed impeller that goes into the timing cover. This particular pump is an Airtex. It's got a nice cast iron impeller. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually a pretty nice pump. It's not the prettiest thing. If you look at it, it's, it's you know, a fairly crude casting. But performance-wise, the impeller's good, and this pump would serve you well um, if you wanted to run that style timing cover. I don't recommend it because of the cavitation and uh, uh, corrosion issues in those timing covers. But if that's what you need to do... This old AirTex pump gets the job done. Um, moving forward, this is a GMB pump. It's what was on my Shelby for the last 32 years. And you can see it leaked. Um, but, I mean, it was on the car for 32 years, okay? So let's not be too hard on it. Is it a good pump? Well, for a stock replacement pump, yeah, I guess so. Um, but there's some things that I don't like about it. Okay, and I'm just gonna point them out. One, there's no hole in the snout. If you had a hole here, it would be to relieve any water that builds up between the two bearings and it would allow that water to leak out. That prevents you from having a straight up failure of both bearings simultaneously. This pump was leaking through the seals on the front bearing which means coolant was going through both bearings and that coolant is gonna destroy the grease in the bearings and you can kind of feel that these bearings are not happy, okay? Um, moving to the back side of the pump, this thing has just a very basic standard style stamped impeller, okay? Nothing fancy and that's, kind of all there is to say about it. It's nothing fancy. It doesn't have particularly good clearances. It's quite a bit away from the housing. Um, and it doesn't reach far enough out to the, um, to the outer perimeter of the housing to really be effective at moving the coolant, okay? Um, you can see that there's a pretty big gap there. I've got big fingers, and I can stick my finger between the impeller and the housing at the tightest points. Now, this thing didn't have but maybe 34, 3,500 miles on it, so it didn't see erosion from um, electrolysis and cavitation as a result of the lack of miles put on it. Instead, this thing just ate away at the gaskets and um, 
the coolant ate away at the housing itself. And you can see all of the corrosion here, this white stuff is aluminum, okay? Um, and it's everywhere. Everywhere that the hoses were, it's there. Is this pump in a pinch for a stock car okay? Sure, I guess so. Um, is this pump you wanna run if you're gonna run the car hard, if the car's got any performance modifications? No, not at all. I, I wouldn't waste my time or my money on a stock replacement pump. Not when you can get a good pump like the one I'm using on my Shelby for basically like 75 bucks, okay? $75 for a water pump is nothing for a good quality water pump. I mean, that is a drop in the bucket. High-end pumps like Edelbrock... They're nice pumps. I have nothing against them. Um, you know, I've used them over the years quite a few times. They're great, but $300 for a relatively stock application, I can't justify that. And maybe you can't either. So you don't want to necessarily buy the cheapest, and you don't necessarily want to buy the most expensive. Um, just be aware that... Your generic pumps are generic tolerances, generic impellers, generic designs, and they're only as good as a generic part is gonna be. Here's our new pump. Yes, I went cast iron. Why cast iron? Well, I wanted something that was gonna look as close as possible to stock, and it's gonna be hard to beat this for a stock appearing cast iron pump. This is a tough stuff pump. Um, it's a nice pump. It's got your pressed in water fittings, um, just like a stock pump. It's machined in all the right places. It's designed for your alternator bracket to bolt to it. You can see the bolt holes at the bottom for the, uh, the backing plate. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If we look at the bottom of this pump, we have a weep hole. And this hole is designed so that if the rear seal fails on the rear bearing, it doesn't push fluid through the front bearing. Um, that just helps prevent you from having catastrophic failure. If you end up with a leak, you'll know you have a leak before it gets to both bearings. Because basically coolant going through these bearings is going to destroy the grease in them and, and then it's, you're, it's game over for your water pump. Now, looking at the back side, Hey, I can't see the impeller. Well, that's actually a good thing. This plate improves the flow of the impeller substantially. Um, let's see. You can kind of see in there, and I'll turn it. Um, this thing only has six blades. But the plate moves a lot more fluid, and the blades are closer to the back of the housing. Also, the overall diameter and you know, I could stick my finger between the the impeller on that GMB pump and my finger doesn't fit in here not not like it did I can put my finger in just like that on the uh, GMB pump and uh, so this larger diameter impeller is going to move more water the shape of this housing being nice smooth contours is going to distribute the water Better. There is a bleed hole here for bypass purposes, so this pump can recirculate. Basically what happens is if you build up pressure behind the thermostat, this bleed hole and your, your hose coming off your intake manifold here allow recirculation to occur. And uh, those are kind of important to selecting your water pump. So there you go. That's the pump that I'm going to be running on my Shelby. This is a good pump. It's going to move the fluid. It's going to do its job. And if everything else in our cooling system is working, that's all I can ask for. And let's talk about cast iron versus aluminum. Okay. The material that the pump is made out of, the housing, really doesn't matter. The material the pump is made out of has basically no effect on heat transfer. The pump's job is to move coolant. So what we care about is a good impeller design and a good housing design. We wanna make sure that our impeller moves fluid at an appropriate rate 
all the time and it doesn't cavitate at high RPM. We want to make sure that the flow is balanced between both banks of the engine. That's what's important. If the housing is made out of cast iron or aluminum, it doesn't really matter. It has no bearing on heat transfer. So if you want an aluminum pump, buy an aluminum pump. If you want an iron pump, buy an iron pump. They're going to perform the same. There's a little weight difference between the aluminum and the iron. Okay, you know, a couple of pounds. Do you need the couple of pounds? Spend the money. If you don't need the couple of pounds, maybe don't spend the money. Um, buy the pump that's right for you. The pump that's right for you is the one that's going to cool your engine off, okay? And that could be a $75 pump or it could be a $375 pump. It just depends on what you want. Um, again, make sure that those features and characteristics that are important are what have been addressed by that pump design and you should be in good shape. Okay, let's talk about organizing the bolts as you're doing the water pump install because this is a really important thing that gets a lot of guys in trouble, okay? I've seen guys, plenty of guys, break small block forward timing covers over the years because they put the wrong bolt in the wrong hole and then they forced it thinking the bolt was stuck and by over tightening it, they broke the timing cover. Uh, the number one culprit is this bolt hole right here on the driver's side, um, right next to the water passage into the timing cover and block. And the reason that that one's the number one culprit is because that is a blind hole and it requires a short bolt. So what I suggest is as you take your bolts out of the used water pump, before you take this used water pump off the car, take the bolts out and put them in the new pump. And I realize these pumps are slightly different, but uh, put them in the new pump in the order they came out of the old pump, okay? Now, you get the old pump off, set it side by side, and just swap them over. So you put your old bolts in the old pump. All right, now we're ready to put our gaskets on our new pump and get ready to install our new pump. Okay, meanwhile, we know where all of our bolts go. So this just makes it a whole lot easier. And if you have two pumps, you just swap them across, okay? Um, with my car, I decided because I knew the bolts were a little iffy after so long with coolant eating away at them, just to be sure that I didn't have any issues with any of the bolts, I bought a bolt kit. Bolt kits are cheap. You know, if you're doing a water pump on one of these old cars, if you're going to drive this thing, an extra 10 or even $15 for a bolt kit isn't really that big of a concession as far as a cost to ensure that you don't get stuck along the side of the road because all of a sudden one of these long bolts that's gotten eaten away over the years decided to snap under a heat cycle and load and um, the head of the bolt pops out. Worst case scenario, it gets into a pulley or a belt. Now you're stuck on the side of the road. You're looking for a tow. You might be 100 miles from home. You don't want that to happen. If your bolts are even remotely questionable, if they don't clean up and look basically like good new bolts, just replace them. If you don't want to buy a kit and you want to go pick them up at a hardware store, by all means, replace them. They're 5 16 18 thread. If you have a 5 16 18 thread tap, I would strongly recommend tap all the holes in the face of the block when the timing cover's off. Tap all the holes in the timing cover just gently. You just want to clean those threads out so that when everything goes back together, it goes back together nice and smooth and there's no issues. Sometimes five minutes of extra effort is so totally worth it. If you're dealing with a car that has sat for a long period of time, you can order a new water pump bolt kit. Um, this is AMK Products, part number F304. 
I believe I ordered it under a Scott Drake number. Either way, um, do a little research. Um, get yourself some new bolts. You'll thank yourself. Um, you'll thank the bolt manufacturer. It just makes everything a whole lot easier. Now, I did tap all the bolt holes in the front of the timing cover, uh, or in the front of the block. I didn't show that. Um, but um, it just makes everything go together smoothly. Um, you get a little bit of corrosion around the water jackets, so um, every little bit helps. But uh, this is nice because it does show where all of the bolts go. And um, we're going to go ahead and move forward with putting on our water pump. I'm going to apply silicone to the gasket on the backing plate and then the gasket to the timing cover and we'll install it. Just like we did with our timing cover install, you just want to smear a, uh, a film basically of the gasket maker on the gasket and this is going to provide an excellent seal. Tighten your bolts so that they're good and snug um, and then apply the water pump gasket to the backing plate. Again, just a smear and uh, no need to get crazy with the amount of sealant that you're applying here. Once you've installed all your bolts, tighten them down in a crisscross pattern evenly until they're all snug. After they're snug, use a torque wrench and tighten the bolts to 18 to 20 foot pounds. While I was there, I installed the thermostat using some ultra gray on the gasket to make sure that I get a good seal. And that wraps up that portion of the project. And with that, um, I hope the tips for gasket install and tracking the bolts all help. Um, you know, keep you guys from ending up uh, plugging up water passages with too much sealant or breaking off bolts or cracking timing covers by putting bolts in the wrong place. Uh, you know, so uh, if you like this information, like the video. I'd appreciate the feedback. Um, if you want more, subscribe to the channel because there's a whole lot more where this came from. Um, if you have comments or questions, leave them below. I answer my comments and questions and reply pretty regularly. Um, you can also check me out on Facebook and Instagram. Links are below. And with that, uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. I hope to see you in the next video.